Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Tuesday, July 12th of 2022, and we have a really exciting announcement for you, as well as some updates and some news. So first of all, the really exciting news that we have for you, and we did, if you were at our live last night, you already heard, but we have decided to do a group cruise, and we have it all set up. It's going to be on Holland America, on the Eurodam to Alaska, departing on May 27th of 2023 round trip out of Seattle. Now, the reason that I chose Holland America is because as you know, I just barely went on Holland America and I honestly felt like Gordon needs to experience going to Alaska on Holland America. We have been previously together three times going to Alaska on Princess. And Holland America and Princess are the cruise lines to go to Alaska on. And so I wanted him to have that wonderful opportunity and experience. But I also thought that I know a lot of you enjoy sailing on Princess. And some of you have sailed on Holland America as well. And so I thought you might enjoy the experience as well. So the, there's a few things that I wanted to tell you about this cruise. First of all, I chose that very last week of May because so many people that live there and the tour guides um, tell me that that is the perfect week. You get to have still some ice in the water, see all that. There's lots of wildlife. There is so much to see. It's not crowded yet. You still are in the part of the season that is hopefully less rain. Um, and so I just thought that we would give that week a try. And so let me tell you, so like I said, it is round trip out of Seattle. So you sail out the May 27th is a Saturday. And so you um, leave and I love that they put you're going to sail through Puget Sound on your way out of Seattle. The next day, Sunday, May 28th is a day at sea. The following day is Monday, May 29th. You cruise in the Stevens Passage in the morning, which is close. Um, like that is where we went on the Koningsdam so that the ship could come, sorry, the boat that took us on the excursion to go up into Tracy Armfjord to see the South Sawyer Glacier. That is where that boat came and picked us right up from the ship. And so you cruise there and then you arrive that same day in Juneau at 1 p.m. And you're in Juneau from 1 until 10 p.m. I love those long port hours that a lot of cruise lines don't have that. And that is just priceless because it makes it so that you can do two excursions if you want to or or you can have plenty of time to sightsee on your own, do your own excursions, whatever it is you want to do, you've got lots of time to do it. So I think that's wonderful. And then, so that is everything for Juno. Then, uh, and then the next day is Tuesday, May 30th. And on that day is Glacier Bay. So that is scheduled from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. And honestly, usually the Rangers get on around 6 in the morning. And the first talk they usually do is around 7. And so you have already entered Glacier Bay, though. Usually around 6 ish you enter Glacier Bay. And so you are already sailing in Glacier Bay by that point. Then the Rangers stay on. You get to see everything. The Eurodom, like the Koningsdom, has that beautiful open bow. And so you get to go out on the very front of the ship and it's down a little bit lower. So you are so close to see everything. So there's that wonderful opportunity. The um, Let's see, the rangers talk about everything. Often the naturalist is around as well and he or she will point out things. It is just an extra special day. So Glacier Bay is an extra special place and I have never been there that it hasn't just been a phenomenal day. So we have that and then usually the rangers will disembark the ship usually around like this time I think it was about 3.15ish. And then so they've scheduled Glacier Bay till four and then I love this this is brand new this is part of why I picked this itinerary is you arrive in Icy Strait Point and you are there from 6 to 10 p.m. so Icy Strait Point is a new port that some of the ships are starting to go to up there in Alaska and um, apparently there is a resident whale one of you let's go family members let me know and I think his name is Barry they say and so he live like is I guess often sighted right there but there is so much wildlife and beautiful scenery right there and so when you think about it being from 6 to 10 a.m., don't worry that it's going to be getting dark then. It is light really late there. And so you'll be able to enjoy, enjoy all of that time there. Then the next day, Wednesday, May 31st, is in Sitka, Alaska. If you're not familiar with Sitka, Sitka was the capital of Alaska over there 
um, when, well, they didn't, the Russians didn't call it Alaska, but when the Russians owned Alaska, that was the capital right there of that area. And so I have wanted to go there for the longest time. I hear that it's a wonderful, wonderful place to visit. And so you get to be there clear from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Again, you've got about all day long to do as much as you want to do, plenty of time to see. And I was really happy with that because it gives you time to go on an excursion and then to walk around the city, the town, and see everything. Thing. So, and then the next day, Thursday, you are in Ketchikan. That is from seven in the morning until one in the afternoon. And then the next day, so think of it like, so that it is a long ways they have to go. And so they are going to be sailing. And then the next day you get to Victoria, but that's not until 6 p.m. And then you're in Victoria from 6 p.m. until 11.30 p.m. And then the next morning, the next Saturday, June 2nd, no, the June 3rd, then you will be disembarking the ship back in Seattle. Seattle. I also chose Seattle because it is often cheaper to fly in and out of Seattle. It's usually simpler. You don't have to worry about um, all the things that you worry about going to another country, like trying to do the ArriveCan app and going through customs at the airport, even though it was so slick this time when I just did it, I thought we would start here together. And then another year we will go maybe out of Vancouver. I would really like to do a group um, trip that's a land tour. Holland America and Princess both run phenomenal land tours. Holland America is the only one that takes you up into the Yukon, and I have my eye on that. So, um, but not the, not for 2023, maybe 2024. But anyway, so I just wanted to let you know we would love it if you would like to come with us. If you do, just send me an email. We always put um, our email addresses underneath the video. We have let's go travel tips at gmail.com or a.larson, L A R S O N, at dreamvacations.com. So just send me that and I'll um, connect with you and send you the information and you can think about going. When I think about doing a group cruise, I just wanted to tell you that if you come with us, I don't know really um, how much other group leaders <laughs> expect from you, but I... <clears throat> think that you can participate with the group as little or as much as you want. I imagine um, reserving some tables for dinner time so that those who would like to eat together can and those who don't want to are under no obligation. I thought we would surely have some times to get together and visit. Um, if anybody wants to go on some of the same excursions, we could kind of coordinate and at least know who's going on what. And um, there's just lots of things we can do together. But I just wanted to put this out there so you can start thinking about it and know what you want to do and I'm also taking suggestions for what you would like to do on a group cruise. Now, along with this, um, this is just like excellent timing because today, July 12th, Holland America released what they are calling their best deal of the year on 2023 cruises. And it does apply to the cruise that is our group cruise. So let me just walk you through that super fast so that you are aware of it. So this sale is going from now until September 30th of this year. And you get um, up to, so you're going to get some onboard credit per state room. You get the crew appreciation. Your gratuities will be covered. A 50% reduced deposit. You get a specialty dining. You get the um, specialty drink package and Wi-Fi. And they say that when you add all of that up, and I think you get a credit on your excursion too. When you add all of that up, it's supposed to be worth $900. And I'm sure that depends on how long your cruise is, but that's um, how they're selling it. So I just wanted to let you know, as far as the onboard credit, since this is a seven day cruise, um, you're going to get $50 per person of onboard credit. And then um, the reduced deposit, we will, um, that you can, we'll just, yeah, so it's a reduced deposit to hold it. Like I said, the crew appreciation, the gratuities, those are all included. That signature beverage package is great. You get up to 15 drinks per day, alcoholic beverages, up to $11 um, worth of money. And just so you know, if you buy an alcoholic beverage that costs $13, they cover $11 and then you get charged for $2. That's kind of how that works if you buy something that's more expensive. It does cover all of your soda, your water, um, all of that kind of um, thing. When I was just on the Koningsdom, I had that. And um, 
let's see, it they give you like canned soda, the water comes in a can, you can pick all the mocktails, all the cocktails, lots of alcoholic beverages that you can pick with that. And then you get to have a specialty dining on the Eurodom, which is what we're sailing on. I think it will be the Pinnacle Grill that will be included one night of that. And then also the shore excursion offer is if you are on the six to nine day voyage, which is what we are going to be on, eligible guests will receive $100 credit per person to apply to your shore excursion. And so that that's a great savings right there. So this is a good time to book it. So look at your calendar. And if you want to come, I just think we're going to have a fun time. I think it's a really great way to meet new people. And if you're someone that you or your um, whoever you're going with would like to go with more people, this is just a really nice built in way to do it. Um, my nature, I'm not going to drive you crazy. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about somebody who's going to try to schedule every moment of your trip. I'm not going to do that at all. I um, want us to get together as much as people would like, and I surely um, want to meet everyone. Um, but as far as um, doing activities, we'll just do fun things. And if you want to come, you're welcome. And if you are busy or doing other things at the same time, that's okay. So, and one thing, you know, I was trying to think of what would be fun to do on an Alaska um, cruise tour, and I was thinking, I have lots of ideas. I can talk to you about that later, but I think, I'm um, sorry, not a cruise tour. It's just a cruise, but I just am so excited about it. I've got lots of great ideas, and I hope that if you can join us, you will. Now, on to the next bit of news. Princess just today has announced that for 2023, they are going to have the Emerald Princess sailing round trip out of Los Angeles to do cruises all summer long. And that is a new thing. Usually, um, they don't always have a ship doing that. And so, let me tell you what they're going to be doing. So, um, and I think it's great that they're putting the Emerald Princess over there. That's a little bit of a mix up, um, like rearranging ships a little bit. And the Emerald Princess is wonderful to sail on. She is who we sailed on when we went to the Mediterranean in 2019, and we had a wonderful time. So she's a great ship to sail. So they are going to be doing the Mexican Riviera with La Paz. And incidentally, if anybody has done that cruise or been to La Paz, does Princess have a shuttle into town? Somebody asked that last night in our live, and nobody was really sure. So if any of you know, I'd love it if you would put that in the comments. So they're going to have those sailings. And by the way, they're doing a mixture of sailings, so like from 5 to 16 days. And so I think that's fun as well. So if you live in the western half of the United States, or especially in California, and it is so easy to get to Los Angeles, there's a lot of fun cruises you can do. You won't get tired of having just one offered the whole time. Then they've also got the Hawaiian Islands, the classic California coast, a Cabo San Lucas getaway, that would be your five-day one, and then there's also a five-day um, West Coast getaway with San Francisco. So I, I love it also that they do five-day getaways. I think that really helps people if they're a little bit crunched on time to be able to still get away and go somewhere fun. And along with that, um, what did I want to tell you? Um, the Emerald Princess. Maybe that was all. So anyway, I am really excited about all of that and wanted to make sure that you know. Now, yesterday, um, our Let's Go family member, Ronald, he will be sailing on the Discovery Princess really soon. Can anybody comment about if you're on the Discovery Princess this week or last, what percent y'all are sailing at? We had um, Becky is currently on, our Let's Go family member is currently on the Majestic Princess. And she said that this week they are sailing at about 50% is all. And um, so she said everything went really smoothly in embarkation. Um, the staff and the level of service has been absolutely excellent. The marketplace, which is the buffet area, has half of its area open, which has been our experience as well as we've been sailing. And she said, but even with just half of it being open, like they still serve everything, but there's usually two halves open when the ship is full. Um, she said every there's never been a wait there. Um, overall, she said the um, food has been okay, but the exception is that the crown grill was outstanding and um so that's just great and then also she said mask wearing has decreased by the hour it's not being enforced and those still wearing one are doing so because they want to not because they have to and it's in our opinion that's the way it should be and we're very grateful so i think that's great i think um i i just that's just great people are doing what they're comfortable with and then um let's see Oh, they did buy the Enclave. I wanted to let you know they did buy that Enclave uh, membership, you know, the pass that you buy and you get to go. And they've been using that and thoroughly enjoying that. Just really wonderful. She did say that the Wi-Fi is awful. 
And so don't be surprised if you go on a princess ship right now and the Wi-Fi is awful. She said it's awful on the Majestic. Just this morning, I talked to my sister that is on the Island Princess and they're disembarking tomorrow in Copenhagen. She said that the Wi-Fi has been horrible. And so that is a really big change. Um, a princess used to be known, they used to tout themselves as having um, the fastest Wi-Fi at sea, the best Wi-Fi at sea, and it is no longer. I don't know um, if they decided to put into effect a cost-saving measure and change their internet provider. I don't know what it is, but they are really struggling with that. So if you are going to go on a princess cruise, um, be aware that if there's anything you have to do, you are gonna. It's gonna take a long time to do it, or you might have trouble connecting some of the time. So if you have anything urgent and you can take care of it before you go, I would say definitely do that. So just I really appreciated her update with that, and um, she said they've had a little bit of trouble with the Medallion Class app as well. And um, you know what? That is just what I hear from so many people. People have a lot of trouble with it. Here and there, I hear of people that don't have any trouble with it. And honestly, I think it's a fluke because um, it seems to come and go. Maybe that's a good way to say it. So if it's working good for you, be grateful. If it's not working good for you right now, I just checked before I did this video so that I could tell you I cannot get logged in to the Medallion Class app with um, my booking number or with my email address like I would normally do it. It's just not working. When you get on the ship, if it's giving you grief, try using your cabin number. That's that made a big difference for us on the Regal Princess. It did work better when we used our cabin number. So I'm just putting that out there for you. I have confidence that maybe I'll be able to get them by the time we go on our next Princess Cruise in October. I just think it's really weird that it does that to me sometimes. And Gordon's is working fine. And I've got the latest update. I've deleted it and reinstalled it all the things. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about here really quick is I get so many requests about doing a video that kind of talks about the vibe on different cruise lines, like what the ex um, cruise experience is a little bit more and what people really like about different cruise lines. And I, have, as you know, I'm really good with Princess. I've got Princess. And now I feel like I could tell you all about Holland America. But I have not sailed um, yet on MSC. I haven't sailed on Carnival or Norwegian or Royal Caribbean. Those are the big four that come to my mind that sail here out of the United States that I wish I knew a little bit more about. And so I wanted to invite all of you, if you wouldn't mind, in the comments to tell me what the, if the those of you that have sailed on any of these other cruise lines, what you really like about them, what you don't like them uh, about them, what the vibe is kind of when you're on board. I would say. Um, um, for example, Holland America is very quiet. It's lovely. It's wonderful. Um, it's just very quiet. And Princess is not quite as quiet as um, Royal Caribbean is. And I, I mean, sorry, it's Holland America. And I could talk to you about that. But if you have anything that you would like to share that you think would help anyone, that would be great because some people read the comments and then it could help me put things together. Our first cruise on Norwegian right now is set for November. And so I will have um, that lovely experience of getting to try that. And we are just trying to see if our schedule is going to allow us to try anyone else before then. And so I would really appreciate that. You all are wonderful and you are such a wealth of knowledge. When I started all of this, I just had the idea that I wanted to have a YouTube channel that could kind of pull people together together and make us into a community to share our experiences, our knowledge, and um, and just to have a wonderful opportunity to have wonderful friends and um, a happy, safe place to be to talk about cruising and traveling and uh, what is most important to you. So I would appreciate your comments. If any of you have questions about anything that I've talked about, just put it in the comments below. If you would like to join us on our group cruise, we would love to have you come. It's just seven days. I, it's going to be wonderful. I am sure it's going to be wonderful. So I hope that you can come if you would like to. I will be talking... Oh, and you know what? If you appreciate these updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>